Okay, so hello and welcome back here. <clears throat> so the next chapter that the next basically part of this of the of the basic mathematics that that, that we are doing here is basically about uh, conic sections and let me go through a couple of things that we need over here and we will get to the exercises because we need the basically we need the the um, the 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 basically what do you call it the the concepts we need for the exercises and you know that the cone you know that basically this kind of this kind of thing this kind of this kind of thing we call a cone and it basically it has it is the shape of this is actually called the cone so the base is basically usually a the base of course has to be a circle like this and and this thing is called the cone now there is something called uh, there is something called uh, and of course this the this geometric figure has or this if you think of this as a solid it has many many different types of applications in mathematics in physics and wherever you go in sciences you have to understand uh, the cone and then from the cone comes the comes the parabola then from the cone comes the hyperbola the hyperbola then from the cone comes the circle then from the cone and also comes the ellipse comes the ellipse I don't want to write these wrong I, there is double L ellipse basically and basically what happens is that for example if you have a cone over here there is, is there is a, there is a special type of cone that you can have like this let's say that this is halfway through here and this is halfway through here and and basically um basically what happens is that this if you have an axis over here if you have an if you have an axis over here a a uh, an axis that is that 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 cannot move let's let's say that you have this axis that which cannot move and if you put a line over here if you put a line over here something like this you put this line over here and let's say that the, the angle between these the the axis so this was basically your axis and this is basically a line which is also sometimes called the generator called the generator now if you and the and the and the, the basically that the, the angle between this line and this generator is alpha so now this generator if you just move it and suppose that basically imagine that this is in 3d space meaning that you have the meaning that you have the x-axis you have the y-axis and also you have the you have the basically the z-axis over here you have the z-axis over here so if that is the case so you have x y and z z x and y you can write them in any order that you want really but uh, you are in 3d space now in 3d space if you just at this angle there is this point you can you can fix this point this is a fixed axis which cannot move right and this is a line that can be moved and it is fixed to this to the axis at this point which is called at this point over here and the the angle between between this line and the axis is alpha now if you keep rotating this if you keep rotating this all around the axis in such a way that the that the angle alpha keeps constant is kept constant so you, you just keep moving that line all around the, the axis 360 degrees 
but in such a way that the in such a way that this angle remains constant then what is what, what will be generated by this by the by the by the rotation of this line all around this axis is going to be basically a is going to be basically something like this is going to be something like this and basically you will have something like this and so you will you will produce you will produce a you will generate a a cone a, a cone basically you will generate a cone up here and you will generate a cone down here both of them connected together at this point which is basically the same point this is your angle alpha this is your generator this is your generator and this is your axis so now there are a few terms that you need to learn about that you need to learn about these 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 uh, cones and of course I, I i mentioned basically these these basically conic sections like for example the parabola the hyperbola the the circle and the ellipse and they are called conic sections simply because simply because for example now imagine that this 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 cone is in 3d space and suppose that i have a i have a plane i have a plane exactly on top of this basically having an angle of um, an angle of basically uh, um, zero degrees for example with respect to this line meaning meaning that it is it is basically perpendicular to this line and then and that and if you have that 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 for example let's say you have a two-dimensional plane xy plane and you just keep you just you just keep it parallel to the to the top of the the, the cone over here and you just just push it down and it goes down here and you would have basically some sort of you would have some sort of basically uh, some sort of basically um, you would have some sort of um, xy plane but well of course parallel to the to the top of the cone over here and so the you would you would basically create in 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 two D space you would create for example a circle on the as a, as a result of the 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 the, the two D plane meeting the meeting the cone or an ellipse for example if you if the if basically in the first in the first scenario we said that basically the, the plane was exactly parallel to the to the top part of the D, to the top part of the cone now if you keep the your plane at an axis and then and then and then bring it down slowly and gradually down here you would have some sort of plane down here but at an axis to at an at an angle to the to the top of to this line over here and then you would have an an ellipse over here this would be an ellipse the first one would be a circle a hyperbola is basically something like this so um the hyperbola is um, is basically something like this meaning that if you have meaning that if you have your cone over here suppose that you have your cone over here and and let's say that this is that point and let me create a a cone over here something like this so let's suppose that this is your cone now suppose that you have the same the same 2d xy plane but now you put it at at an angle but up basically along the along the height of the along the height of the the, the cone over here for example something like this something like this for example something like this okay so this is now your plane you just you just place it over here 
and of course the plane as you know it can go inside the coin it can go can go through the coin you can you can imagine that that your coin is basically kind of like a transparent object in space and a plane can go through the can go through the the, the, the cone and then come out on the other side of the cone so now if you put it halfway somewhere between somewhere in the middle of the cone then you would you would create of course basically drawing these kinds of things is not really easy but you get the idea that that for example you would get you would get for example some sort of figure like this over here something like this you need to of course you do need to to find some way to um to to imagine these to, to be able to imagine these things in your mind and um, that kind of that i mean that way of using your mind of course would would help you at, would would help you a lot in 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 basically learn mathematics learning physics and i suppose learning all kinds of sciences really and so this would be a a, a hyperbola meaning that then in 2d space we would the hyperbola would be would be basically would be represented this way and there is also something called called a parabola there is something else called a parabola a parabola in 2d space is is shown like this this is called a parabola and you know that this is a second degree this is a second degree degree polynomial in algebra now in in 3d space if again if you have your your cone and if you if you if you generate your cone like this and suppose that this is suppose that this is your cone now suppose that you have the same xy plane two-dimensional plane and that two-dimensional plane now you need to basically uh, insert your plane into your cone in for example in, in in this kind of orientation for example something like this in this orientation over here and then what happens is that then in in basically the basically this plane is just you can you can imagine this plane as just a a, a, a transparent piece of paper for example a very tra a t a transparent piece of paper that goes through that that cone and that cone you can you can imagine that it's a cone in space which is 3d but transparent and transparent and also in such a way that for example your basically your your sheet of your transparent sheet of paper can 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 just slide through that that 3d 3d solid now once that happens so then on the on the on the basically on the side and the wherever basically the the this plane meets meets basically your solid you will have for example some shape like this of course it's not again it's not easy to 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 basically have a clear shape of these things in your mind probably if you find some sort of software on the on the on the internet some sort of software that with which you you could basically take a few solids for example take a cone and take a 2d plane and then put move the plane around and see what happens inside so let me see if i can actually find something like that so for example if you search for if you search for the intersection of 2d plane with 3d 3d geometric 3d solids and write interactive software software online 
it has to be in such a way that you could actually move things around so for example if you go over here so as you can see 3d version 2 the the beta and it seems to be vision tutorials web figures recommended configuration okay for example something like this something like this for example as you can see you can dramatically dynamically transform your construction to reveal relationships between the elements clarify and organize your construction using the, the numerous graphic attributes available color texture and styles freely move the viewpoint around your construction and simultaneously display any number of projections from a choice of over 15 standard projections and organize these views on one or more pages adding comments rich text print or capture document pages at high resolution expose export your documents as inter as interactively manu man manipu manipulable figures for inclusions in windows applications and web pages free windows plugin and gabri 3d is a completely new product is available separately from 2d gabri okay something like this for example you can find on the internet training videos let me see for example let's see what we have over here creating a heat run a decahedron and now so for example when you get to the end of the step you can move the mouse over the screen So this is basically I was I was basically talking about something like this or you could even have you could even find some software on probably on Linux on the Linux um, uh, on the Linux um, in the Linux world you will be able to to, to find many such uh, pieces of software where you could actually do these kinds of things but i suppose if you do it if you do this on a computer for a while then your mind will be trained as well to do these kinds of things on its own without using a computer anyway then this would be for example a parabola now as far as these uh, these uh, basically these cones are concerned there is some terminology um, basically associated with these um so basically we said that so basically we said that uh, we said that basically let's let let if you if you can imagine that l is a basically l is a fixed is a fixed vertical line and let's let's say let's say that you have another line over here m for example this line over here let's call it m for example or m and this this line m is fixed to fixed to l at this point at this point over here 
at the point for example let's call it v for example and the and the inclination of the of the of the line m with respect to line l is let's suppose that for example that is alpha now if you rotate if you rotate this line l um, around it, it, if you rotate this line m around the line l in such a way that this angle remains constant there will be a surface generated around around this around this axis and that surface generated would be basically something like this would be basically something like this would be something like this and that would be basically you could say that it's basically two cones on top of one another and it's called a double napped right circular hollow cone it's called a double napped or double napped right circular right circular hollow hollow cone so this is basically this is basically one thing that that you need to learn about this this is of course a right circular cone because if you if you imagine that there is a base over here this axis is has a is basically at an angle of 90 degrees to the base and uh, and it is double napped because you have two well two naps over here and it's a right right and of course it's a circular the base is a, is a circle and it's hollow so it's called double napped right circular cone and of course from from here on at least in this chapter we will we will refer to this as simply as a cone so whenever i say a cone what i mean is a double is is either well a a, a double napped or a single napped right circular cone and uh, depending of course on the situation where we were talking and uh, so this point the point over here which we called v over here is called the vertex of is called the vertex of the cone this line l over here this line l is called the axis the axis of the cone um, and this line over here this line m over here this line m over here is called the generator well because probably because well it, it is used it is used i mean it is rotated to generate the the cone so it's called the generator and this vertex basically separates the separates the cone into two parts called called naps so the this whole thing basically over here is actually one single cone with the, with that definition if we say that the if we say that the vertex basically separates the cone into two parts called naps then you can you can of course assume that this whole thing is basically just one cone uh, and but sometimes we basically we we imagine we in mathematics also sometimes we um, consider this to be a cone as well but at least for as long as we are talking in in these few videos let's have this definition and see what what we'll have um, next now um, now if you take basically as we talk as we as we mentioned here if you take the intersections if you take the intersection of a plane of a plane um, with 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 basically the cone that you have generated here whatever you get as a as a as a result of that intersection is called a conic section it's called a conic section and of course the name is the name is of course self-explanatory it it does explain itself meaning that it says it's a section that has been created from a cone so it's a conic section
So basically then you can say that conic sections are basically curves obtained by intersecting a right circular cone with um, with a plane or intersect uh, basically you can say that the conic sections are, are are these kinds of curves for example that you see over here that are generated as a result of the intersection of a of a basically right circular cone and a two-dimensional plane And well, of course, depending on the position of the the position and the and the angle of inclination of basically depending on the way that you that you that you intersect the two together, then of course you will get different kinds of curves with different kinds of names, of course. Um, now there are a few things over here. If, if we were to talk about these a little bit more systematically so there are basically we, here we will basically talk about four different conic sections we will talk about circles we will talk about circles we will talk about ellipses ellipses we will talk about parabolas We'll talk about parabolas and we will talk about hyperbolas. So in the case of a circle, basically you have your cone and there is basically some angle over here that that you can you can imagine that for example you have your cone over here. You have your cone over here and uh, well, this is the top of the cone and if you if you put basically we had a 2d plane that you have to depending on how you how you intersect your your plane with with your cone you're going you're going to get one of these one of these conic sections or some other thing that we have not listed over here now what we have over here is that basically if you have this 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 cone over here now you can imagine that i can place my i can place my uh, 2d plane i can place it over here like this meaning that i can put it over here like this and 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 And over here, and over here, I will have basically this. I will have this circle, and of course, you can imagine that you can imagine that there is. If you, if you imagine that there is a line over here, you can imagine that this angle over here, if I call it beta, over here, you can imagine that beta is ninety degrees meaning that the angle between between this between this line and the axis of the cone is 90 degrees so then in that case you will get a circle so then you can say that if basically when beta is equal to 90 degrees the section basically is called a circle okay now there is um, there is basically one more possibility that for example let's say that you have your cone over here you have your cone over here and suppose that I suppose that i put i have i take my plane and and place it over here in this orientation meaning that i put it over here just like this just like this somewhere over here like this okay and so you can imagine that of course if, if you imagine that there is a line over here the 
the the angle that this line makes with the with the with the with the axis of the of the of the of the cone is basically if I call it beta you can see that and if you remember basically this angle we called it alpha we call this angle alpha and that is the angle that the generator makes with the with the axis of the cone now if this angle if beta is greater than alpha but less than 90 if beta is greater than alpha but less than 90 what you will get over here is basically called a is called a um, an ellipse which is which which would be basically something like this which would be something like this and you know that and in the case of an ellipse um, basically in the case of a circle if you have a circle over here a circle basically you can say that this is the diameter of the circle and this is the diameter of the circle and of course if I call this d1 and if I call this d2 you know that in a circle d1 is equal to d2 if if d1 is perpendicular to d2 for example this is a circle now in the case of an ellipse there is always there is always one of these diameters, if the two diameters are perpendicular, there is always one of these diameters, is always one of them is longer than the other one. Meaning that if I imagine that I have this, this thing over here, then this is basically called, this is basically called an ellipse. So if I call this, for example, D1 and D2, if I if d1 is perpendicular to d2 then of course d1 is greater than d2 for example this is called an ellipse this is called an ellipse and and of course when when the when your plane is placed in such a way in, in inside basically is placed inside your your cone in such a way that basically your beta is greater than alpha is greater than alpha but less than 90 then um, you will get an ellipse over here and that's basically what an ellipse is we will we will talk more about ellipses later now there is um, one more possibility of course there are many many other types of possibilities mm, I'm not really sure if there are there are only four different cases over here but I, I suppose there there might be more possibilities of generating different much more I mean many more different types of at least conic sections using a cone now let's suppose that I have my let me open my window Okay, so now let's suppose that I put, I place my cone, uh, a parabola in, a parabola 1.6. Okay, so now let's suppose that I have my cone over here. I have my cone over here. And so suppose that this is basically my cone and now i have the same plane but now this time i put i place my my plane in a different in a slightly different orientation meaning that meaning that i put my plane in this orientation over here of course some something like this in this orientation over here something something like this so some orientation like this and if i do if i if i did so i would get 
basically this line over here and then as you can see the 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 angle that that the, that the plane makes with the with the axis of the of the cone i can call this beta and of course you know that this angle was alpha as we discussed before and if basically when 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 uh, beta when, when beta is equal to alpha if i if i basically place my beta my 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 basically plane in such a way that beta is equal to alpha if beta is equal to alpha then what 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 you get over here is basically a conic section which is which is called a which is called a it would be something basically something like this well of course it's not very accurate but you would get something like this and Of course, you sh you should. Of course, you can imagine that this this cone is is a hollow cone. You already know that it is a hollow cone. And then, when a plane goes, when a plane is, and when you put a plane inside your cone, then of course you can imagine that you will have something like this starting from this 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 top over here and it comes down over here and then on the other right but basically on the other side of the cone if it go it goes down like this all the way up to this edge over here and this this shape basically this conic section is called the parabola okay and we will talk of course more about these and of course i would like to have some sort of software over here where i could actually see how these would change i mean we could we could actually see these things interactively changing together but we will i'll, I'll have to search about that a little more and uh, and so that's basically where, where beta is equal to alpha. So that's basically called a parabola. Now let's suppose that you have, let's suppose that you have basically a cone over here. Let's suppose that you have a cone over here. And in the case of this cone, in the case of this cone, what you have is what you have is basically when if suppose that your 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 beta basically the angle that the that the that the the, the angle that the that the that the that the, the x y plane makes with the with the axis over here suppose that your beta is is greater than or equal to zero is equal to zero greater than or equal to zero but less than alpha this is your alpha and uh, suppose that i put my plane in this in this orientation so your beta is less than alpha but but greater than or equal to zero so i would I would basically get something like this. I would get something like this. Or probably something like this. Well, of course, this is just... Okay, I would get something like this. And then, and then this would be... This would be basically the angle that... This would be the angle that this makes with the, this would be beta, and beta is greater than or equal to zero less than alpha. And then um, I would get basically something like this over here, something like this over here, and 
something like this over here. It, 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 it should be it should be something like this over here. Okay. So this kind of this, now this kind of conic section, and of course you can imagine that. Well, again, I should find some sort of software so that I can actually see these myself. But, but, but basically, this is a good place to start. Basically, but not 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 really a great place to start. Anyway, then this this kind of conic section is called a hyperbola. Okay. So so that's basically all about these. Now, the first thing that we that we had over here was a circle. The first thing that over here that we have is a circle. And basically what a circle is, basically what a circle is, you can say that the circle is a set of all points in a plane that are equidistant from the fixed points in the plane. So basically when you have, suppose that you have this circle over here and it has some sort of center. And we know that basically if you, if you draw this as the radius of the circle, this radius is equal to this radius, is equal to this radius, is equal to this radius, and so on and so forth. So what that means is that every point on the circumference of this circle is 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 at a at a fixed point from some point in the plane, which is basically called the center of a uh, the center of the circle. So as a definition, but of course some people say that the circle is a locus of all points that are at a. They, they, some people say that the that the circle is a. The circle is a is the is the locus of lo, locus of all points that are that are all at a at a fixed distance fixed distance from a point from a point in the plane okay meaning that meaning that the locus of all points then you would have to know basically what they mean by the by the locus of all points but here the definition that we have over here is well much more practical and simpler it's, it says that the circle it says that the circle is is the set of is the set of all points in a plane in a plane that are that are equidistant equidistant from a fixed point from a fixed point, fixed point in the plane. From a fixed point in the plane, and so that fixed point, as you know, is called the the center of the circle, and the distance from the center to any point on the on the circumference of the circle is called the radius of the circle. So what that means is that, for example, if I have this circle over here. Then, for example, you can imagine that you can call this point P1, you can call this point P2, you can call this point, for example, P3, and so on and so forth. This point O is called the center of the circle, and this over here is called the radius, which is, of course, this is also the radius, this is also the radius, and of course, well, you can say that OP1 is equal to OP2 is equal to OP3 is equal to all the way up to O of OP of N, basically. 
and a little more systematically a circle is basically demonstrated this way meaning that you could have a circle over here this is your center c the coordinate of this point is h comma k h comma k in the language of basically circles and um, in geometry and there is there is this point over here which is basically p and a, a point on the circumference of the circle with the coordinates x comma y and this is the point o which is the origin of the of the <coughs> of the coordinate system <coughs> so you can imagine that uh, then that's that's basically all of these points um and of course um, some people basically wrongly think that that for example when you when you draw a circle like this this whole area over here is actually the circle this is not the circle this is i mean that that that's that that is actually not the circle the circle is actually the, the set of all of these points right here that basically are all at the at a fixed distance from this center over here meaning that meaning that the locus of these points or the set of all of these points of course if you want to get to, to get too technical about this you would you would basically you would get lost in the definition of a circle but um, but uh, the only i mean what i'm trying to say is that this part over here this is not the circle and these parts over here these are the, the these 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 points are not on the circle the circle is actually only these points over here okay only these points over here now um of course we have we have talked uh, basically more technically about circles well not here but i have talked about them elsewhere now if it's if it's necessary we will we will put together a good a, a set of good definitions and everything about circles but otherwise right now it doesn't seem to be necessary so now in order to find the diff in order to find an equation for a circle we can do it based on the based on the definition that we that we that we just had over here for the circle we said that the circle is a set of all points in a plane that are equidistant from a fixed point in the plane meaning that the set of all of these points is called the circle now the set of all of these points you see you can imagine that any point that you pitch over here on the circumference of the circle is actually at the same distance with the with the center of the circle so what that means is that uh, then you can using the distance formula you can say that well of course you know that this distance is basically the the radius of the circle so you can say r is equal to the square root of and your distance formula is ab is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole squared now one of the points is basically h comma k the other point is x comma y so so i have um, x comma y and h comma k h comma k two points over here so i can write basically x2 minus x1 take this as point two take this as point one x2 minus x1 would be x minus h x minus h whole squared plus y minus k y minus k whole squared and if you raise both sides of this equation to the second power you will get basically x minus h whole squared plus y minus k whole squared is equal to r squared that is and this is the equation this is the equation of a circle this is the the equation equation of a circle 
with uh, center with center h comma k and and radius radius r so this is basically what we learned so far so it's good to know that for example that, that for example your circle where, where it actually comes from technically and then of course we will find our, our way through all of these things now there is only a couple of examples over here and they are all useful examples we will do them as well and then we'll get to the exercises okay so now we have <coughs> So now we have two questions over here. So for example, let's say that you, you want to find an equa the equation of a circle with the center at, for example, the center of the circle is at 0, 0, and, and the radius is r. And the radius is, and the radius is r. So in order to find the equation of this circle, so basically what you what you need to do over here is that um, um, is that um, basically uh, we said that h minus x minus h whole squared plus y minus k whole squared is equal to r squared. This was the this was the equation of a circle whose center is at h comma k and whose radius is r. Now if the if your h and k are 0 comma 0, h comma k are at 0 comma 0, then uh, in this in this formula what you can do is that you, you, you would get x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. And that is the equation, that is the equation of, the equation of a circle, of a circle with, with center at, center at the origin, at the origin, and radius r, and radius r. So this is something kind of, of course, general that you can use in, well, many different situations as long as your circle has not been shifted to any other, to, to, to any other point in the, in the coordinate system. And, uh, and of course, you know that this, um, basically this, um, when you write basically, I mean, Compared to this, for example, if you have x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, and if that is a circle at at the origin center at the origin with radius r, then what that means is that when you write x minus h whole squared plus y minus k whole squared, um, plus y minus k whole squared is equal to r squared, then this is basically some shift in in your in your x and y meaning that your x has been for example your x has been moved to the moved to the moved to the right by h units and your 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 y has been moved to 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 to, the, to basically not upwards but downwards Mm, but downwards like k units or something like that but of course we will get there you don't need to worry about this right now but anywhere where you have for example y is equal to if you have y is equal to for example if if y is equal to f of x is equal to for example let's say that that doesn't apply here i, I don't want to confuse you okay Okay, so the next thing that we have is another example, and it's too hot today. The next thing that we have is another example. You have, you want to find the equation of a circle 
we want to find the equation of a circle with the center at with the center at negative 3 comma 2 and radius 4 and radius 4 so again we said that we said that x minus h x minus h whole squared plus y minus k whole squared is equal to r squared so that means that this is this is your h and k so then you can write x minus h which is equal to basically negative 3 so that's x plus 3 whole squared plus y minus 2 whole squared is equal to basically r squared which is equal to 4 squared which is equal to 16 so that's the equation of your of your circuit or let's say that you have for example you, let's say that you have this circle over here x squared plus y squared plus y squared plus 8x plus 10y minus 8 is equal to 0. Yeah, this is the, let's say that this is the, 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 the equation of a circle. You want to find the center. You want to find the center and, and the radius and the radius. So since we said that basically if you write, if you have the equation, the general equation of a circle x minus h whole squared plus y minus k whole squared is equal to r squared. If you write the equation of your circle, circle this way, then we said that h comma k, h comma k becomes the, the becomes the coordinates of the center of the circle and r becomes your radius so what that means is that if i can take this equation and write it in this form then of course you i could compare it to i could well i could compare it to the structure of this equation and then find out what what my h and k and the radius are so so as you can see over here i have x minus h whole squared so i have to basically write this as for example x squared plus 8x and then over here i have y squared i have y squared plus 10y minus 8 is equal to 0. so this is all that I have which is related to x this is all that I have which is related to y and as you can see over here these all of these terms are related to x related all of these terms are y re related and of course h and k are constant so so that's basically that so now in order to be able to write this as a perfect square you do know that basically you do know that a squared plus b squared plus 2 times ab is equal to a plus b whole squared. So I want to write this as a plus b whole squared. Now, these basically I have this term is x squared, for example, let's say. This term over here, let's say, is 2 ab's, but, but b squared is not there. b squared is not there. So what I can do is that I write this as x squared plus basically if this is 2ab then I write as 2 times a and a is basically x over here 2 times x times b and b is basically has to be some number that if you multiply it by 2x gives me 8x so it has to be 4 so, so far I have not changed this equation at all. I have written it as x squared plus 8x. Now, I need this term over here as well, which is b squared. And I said that b, we said that b is equal to 4. So b squared would be 4 squared. 
So now I have added a 16 to this equation. So I have to sometimes somewhere I have to subtract it. So I write a negative 4 squared over here so that I have not changed anything over here. And this becomes basically this first part over here. And in the same way, I can write basically y squared plus 10y. I can write it as plus y squared plus 2 times ab. So 2 times y times 5, for example. 2 times 5 is equal to 10 times 1 is equal to 10y. And now I need my b squared as well. So b is 5 over here, so that's 5 squared. So I subtract the 5 squared as well so that I have not changed anything here. And then I have a negative 8, negative 8 over here. And this is equal to 0. This is equal to 0. So now over here I have x plus 4, x plus 4 whole squared. And over here I have y plus 5 whole squared, y plus 5 whole squared. And over here I have basically negative 8, I have negative 16, and I have negative 25. So 8 plus 16 plus 25 is equal to 35, 41, 49. So that's negative 49. Negative 49 is equal to 0. And then, and then what we have is basically x plus 4 whole squared plus y plus 5 whole squared is equal to positive 49. And, and of course I can write this as, um, and of course I can write this as x plus 4 whole squared plus y plus 5 whole squared is equal to 7 squared. So, and the, the general form of the, of the, of the, of the equation of the circle was x minus h whole squared plus y minus k, h and k, y minus k whole squared was equal to r squared. So as you can see over here, I have my negative h is equal to 4 and negative k is equal to 5. That means that h is equal to negative 4 and k is equal to negative 5. And as you can see, r squared, r squared is equal to 7 squared. That means that r is equal to 7. So that is basically all of the pieces of information that we were looking for. So that means that h comma k, which is the center of the circle, which is the center of the circle is equal to negative 4 comma negative 5 and r is equal to positive 7. <coughs> so that's basically how you would solve for example this example. <coughs> and one thing that I I mean I, I say this out of really out of experience these things, of course, are simple. I mean, there is nothing really very complicated about them. But, uh, well, believe it or not, they are tricky. You know, they are really tricky, meaning that you basically, you, you even you derive an equation and you think that you have understood it. For example, you derive your equation, we derive this equation somewhere over here, derive the equation this way and well of course there is nothing complicated about this and well you think that well of, of course I have understood this so whenever I want to use it I will have no problem doing that but believe it or not when you want to use it you will make some mistakes in the beginning and until you get the hang of the get the hang of the concept, get the, get the hang of the equation and how to use that, that, that concept in different situations and so on and so forth. And, well, to get the hang of some equation and some concept in mathematics, to particularly, means that you should, well, 
I mean, you need to, you do need to solve enough exercises related to that topic until you feel comfortable with that topic. And then you can, you can safely say that I have learned this topic. And, and of course the topic when you, even when you learn it, you're going to forget it. You are going to forget it after some time. My job right now is to create these videos. That's what I do every day. And of course, in order, I mean, in order for me to be able to explain all of these things, I do need to understand them first. Well, I do understand them. I, I explain them over here. I use them in countless examples. And then sometimes there are certain things that I find that I have forgotten after, for example, two months or after three months. And then I have to go back and, for example, take a look and see what that was. But, uh, well, but basically in the beginning, at least in the, in the, in the, in the, in the first stages, you do need to solve enough exercises so that you get the hang of that concept and all the basically related formulas there is no really there is no other way i have i mean personally i have tried the other way i have tried to avoid basically exercises because and my the way that i rationalized it was that i said that it, it would take me a long time and i don't have the time but well then what you will find out is that it, it's, it's not going to work for you that way. Anyway, there is one more question here. We will do this question as well and then we'll go to the exercises. Okay, so the next question that we have is um, find the equation of the circle which passes through the point 2, negative 2 and uh, 3 comma 4 and the center of this circle lies on this line the center lies on lies on x plus y is equal to 2 so so what that means is that basically when we said that the that the basically based on the information that you have you have to Put together a few equations and then see if those if it's possible to to solve those equations based on the well based on the equations that you have meaning that for example if you have uh, for example two equations containing two variables um, that can constitutes a, a system of equations in two variables and then you will be able to solve them in some way or another it all depends on the situation, but then, then first you need to develop your your equations. So, so we said that basically x minus h whole squared plus y minus k whole squared is equal to r squared. That means that basically since this point is on this circle, this is a general equation of a circle. Since uh, assuming that the, that the point two comma negative two lies on this circle i can substitute 2 for x and negative 2 for y so i can write basically 2 minus h whole squared plus y minus k which is negative 2 minus k whole squared is equal to r squared and with the same logic i can write so i can call this for example equation number one with the same logic using this point 3 comma 4 I can write for example 3 minus h whole squared plus 4 minus k whole squared y minus k whole squared is equal to r squared which is well r squared for this equation number 2 now I have another equation I can I mean I can write another equation I know that the center lies on this line. So if you basically know that if you have based on what we had in the 
in the section related to straight lines we learned that if you have for example some line over here let's say that this you have this line over here and you have the, the equation of this line is ax plus by plus c is equal to zero now there is of course you know that a b and c are constants and x and y are uh, your your variables you plot your x along this along this axis and you plot your y's along this axis and then basically the 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 combination of x and b of, of a and b and c multiplied by your x and y and what c as a constant itself they basically kind of determine what your line what what your line looks like through which point it passes what sort of intercepts it has what sort of slopes it has it has and so on and so forth now if 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 basically now now that you have this point this line over here if i pick some point over here for example x1 comma y1 and if assuming that this point is on lies on this line there is this relationship between this x1 and y1 if i if i pick another point x2 comma y2 the same relationship is is there between the, the x2 and y2 and so on and so forth so that means that <coughs> what that means is that uh, basically uh, for example as an example to, to to demonstrate this more practically in a in a more concretely <coughs> for example let's say that you have this line over here um, let's say that you have this line over here for example let's say that this this line is equal to, is is this the equation of this line is x is equal to y so so th what that means is that the relationship between x and y coordinate of every point on this line is that x is equal to y it's very simple and it's very elegant of course and it's a good example Meaning that, for example, if you pick this point over here, it's 1, 1, 1, 1, and you see that x is equal to y. If I pick, for example, this point over here, it is 2, 2, and you see that x is equal to y. If I go over here and pick this point over here, it's negative 1, negative 1, and still you can see that x is equal to y, and so on and so forth. So what that means is that if my center, which is h comma k, lies on lies on basically x plus y is equal to two, I can say that this relationship is there between the between 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 h and k whatever that, that those points might be this relationship is between is 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 there between the two between the this x coordinate and this y coordinate that means that i can write and and what that also means is that this point of course would satisfy this equation because this this point lies on the line so then based on this i can write h plus k h plus k is equal to 2 and i can call this equation number 3 so so from these two equations 2 minus h power squared equation number 1 and 2 since both of these are equal to r squared i can write 2 minus h whole squared plus negative 2 minus k whole squared is equal to this part over here because both are equal to to r squared so 3 minus h whole squared plus 4 minus k whole squared and if you basically um, expand this you will get basically 2 squared which is equal to 4 2 squared which is equal to 4 
plus h squared minus 2 times 2 times h which is negative 4h plus negative 2 squared which is equal to 4 plus 4k squared which is equal to k squared negative 2 times negative 2 times times k which is equal to positive 4 times k plus 4k is equal to basically 3 squared which is equal to 9 plus h squared minus 6 times h plus 16 plus k squared k squared negative 8 times k so h squared and h squared you can cancel out k squared and k squared you can cancel out and you have negative 4h plus 4k plus 4 and then over here you have negative 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 6h i'm sorry plus 6h plus 8k minus 9 is equal to 0 and then you can write negative 4h neg plus 6h is equal to 6 minus 4 is equal to 2h and 8 plus 4 is equal to 12k 12k and negative 4 plus plus uh, plus 4 is negative 9 plus 4 is equal to negative 5 is equal to 0 and over here we had we had basically h plus k is equal to 2 that means that that means that h is equal to 2 minus k for example so i can write i can write basically h 2 times 2 minus k plus 12 times k minus 5 is equal to 0 4 minus 2k plus 12k minus 5 is equal to 0 12k minus 2k is equal to 10k. Negative 5 plus 4 is equal to negative um, 5 plus 4 is equal to negative 1 is equal to 0. That means that 10k is equal to um, 10k is equal to 1, and that, that means that k is equal to 1 tenth. K is equal to 1 tenth. No, that's not right. We have made a mistake somewhere over here. I think we have made a mistake somewhere over here. Let me see. Um, so, if the if you have two negative two and three comma four, so x minus h, so two minus h whole square plus negative 2 minus k whole squared is equal to r squared and 3 minus h is equal to 4 minus k whole squared is equal to r squared and over here you can write you can write x plus h plus k is equal to 2 that is all correct uh, 2 minus h whole squared minus plus negative 2 minus k whole squared is equal to 3 minus h plus 4 minus k whole squared and then over here you have 2 squared which is equal to 4 h squared uh, negative 4 times h 4 plus k squared plus 4 times k is equal to 9 plus h squared negative 6 times h and over here you have 16 plus k squared minus 8 times k is correct Yeah, let me erase these parts and see what I have done over here. So now here h is squared and, and h is squared I can cancel out. K is with k is squared can cancel out. So I have negative 4 times h and negative 6 times h because plus 6 times h. And then over here I have... 4 times k, 4 times k, plus 8 times k, 8 times k, and over, over here I have 4 minus 9, plus 4 minus 9 is equal to 0. So there is a 16 over here. There is a 16 over here. Plus 4 minus 9 minus 16 is equal to 0.
So that means that um, 6 minus 4 is equal to 2h, 4k that's plus 12k, and then here you have negative 25 plus negative 20, 5 plus 4 is equal to negative 21 is equal to 0, and if h plus k is equal to is equal to 2, that means that h is equal to 2 minus k, so then 2 times 2 minus k is equal to plus 12k, minus 21 is equal to 0. That means that 4 minus 2k plus 12k minus 21 is equal to 0. 12 minus 2 is equal to 10k. Negative 21 plus 4 is equal to uh, 17. Negative 17 is equal to 0. And That's negative 25 plus 4 is equal to negative 21. And then here over here you have 2 times 2 minus k plus 12k minus 21 is equal to 0. 4 minus 2k plus 12k minus 21. 12k minus 2k is equal to 10k. And that is 20, negative 21 plus 4 is equal to negative 17. So that means that 1.7. 7. Well, we have forgotten a 4 over here. We have forgotten a 4 over here. So this is, there is another 4 over here, I'm sorry. So this is basically, this is basically 6h minus 4h is equal to 2h and 8k plus 4 is equal to 12k. And this is 8. And this is negative 25. 25 minus 8 is equal to... Uh, so you have basically 4 plus 4 minus 9 minus 16 is equal to negative 17. Negative 17 is equal to 0. And, uh, well, 2h is 2 times... 2 minus k plus 12k minus 17 is equal to 0. That is 4 minus 2k plus 12k minus 17 is equal to 0. And 4 uh, basically, and over here you have 12k minus 2k is equal to 10k and negative 17, that is negative. Uh, Negative 17 plus 4 is equal to negative 13. Negative 13 is equal to 0. 10k is equal to 13. That means that k is equal to 13 tenths. This is the wrong, the right answer. Well, my mind is a little bit tired right now because I've been driving for for, for a few, for an hour or so, so I, I'm not really used to driving. So that's why I tend to make mistakes right now. I do pause this video for a few moments. I'll have to basically take care of my mind and then I'll be back with the rest of this example. Okay, so now since k is equal to 13 tenths, so then you can, of course, write basically h is equal to basically 2 minus 13 tenths, 
which is equal to which is equal to 10 and then 20 minus 13 which is equal to 7 tenths so your h is equal to 7 tenths and uh, and then based on based on h and k you can calculate your r meaning that you can write you can take any of these equations over here you can take for example this equation over here and make a screenshot over here and then and then write over here basically we had 2 minus h whole squared plus negative 2 minus k whole squared is equal to r squared so your h is equal to 7 tenths so 2 minus 7 tenths 7 tenths whole squared my plus negative 2 minus 13 tenths whole squared is equal to r squared <coughs> now 2 minus 2 minus 7 tenths is the same thing as 10 20 minus 7 which is equal to 13 tenths 13 tenths whole squared is equal to 169 hundredths and negative 2 negative 13 tenths is equal to 10 negative 20 negative 13 which is equal to negative 33 negative 33 tenths uh, negative 33 tenths is equal to negative 33 tenths whole squared is equal to well, 33 squared is equal to 99 0 99 and then you have 9 18 and 10 89 10 89 divided by a hundred is equal to r squared so what that means is that 10 89 10 89 plus 169 is equal to 18 1 9 plus 6 is equal to 15, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 5, 8. So that means that 1, 2, 5, 8 tenths is equal to R squared. So this is the value of R squared. So now what we know is that basically H is equal to this, K is equal to this, and so on and so forth. So I can make a screenshot over here put this over here and then come back up here somewhere and so now I know that I know that basically h is equal to 7 tenths k is equal to 13 tenths and r squared is equal to r squared is equal to 1258 tenths so we said that h x minus h whole squared plus y minus k whole squared is equal to r r squared. So then you can substitute these values here. H is equal to seven tenths, so x minus seven tenths whole squared plus y minus thirteen tenths whole squared is equal to r squared which is 1258 divided by 10 and that is the equation of the circuit that we were looking for so that is basically for example how you solve such a such 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 a such a such a, such a problem now in the in the next video we will go through some ex some exercises and see what those look like we have around 15 exercises over here so i'll see you in the next video thank you